Hello, you are here because you want to find out how to use a video pad editor. Okay, it's a very simple program, but when you go to install it, download it, install it, and you open it up and this is your screen, you're like, what do I do? Especially if you're not used to creating videos at all. So it, that's perfectly normal, don't worry. I've had a lot of emails and a lot of questions about how to use it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, this is going to be your screen, of course. These are going to be your main tools that you use right up here at the top. Now, what you want to do is you want to add on add media. You want to add some clips to play around with. Now I just happen to have these here. Now what you do is you can add one at a time here, which ones you want. But you can go back and also add all of them if you want. There. Now if you notice I've got two on here that are alike. Just click on one. Go down and it says remove item. Not a problem. You can remove and add it as many times as you want. And you want to, let's say you want to put that one on first. Of course, this screen here is where you will drop over from this list to here and drop down to your timeline is what you want to do. The reason why they have this is you can edit a little bit as far as time frame. So you have your default, my default's three. I think it's four when you first download it. And you have your errors up and down, how many seconds you want this to appear on your video. So let's go ahead and hit 10, for example. Make sure you hit apply, because if you don't hit apply, it goes back to default. Apply, then you hit this arrow, it's going to plop it right down here. This is your timeline. This is an important part of your video creation. Okay? All right, of course here you'll see all your seconds and all your minutes along this line right here, how long that is. So you can see 10 seconds. So over here on the right is your video status at that given point. Now. What it does is when you go to any point whatsoever during your editing, when you're done with your editing, it doesn't matter. You hit your play button and this little slider comes out and it shows everything that you have and your viewers are going to see at that point in time and see if you like it or not. Very simple. Now when it hits to the end, of course, it's going to go black and you'll have right here your timeline, exact seconds and minutes right here. So you know where to put your thumbnail. So if you don't know how to use effective thumbnails, I've got a couple of secrets up my sleeve. Go ahead and watch my video on my channel, and it says the secret of using thumbnails for YouTube. Don't quote me on that, but that's the only one I have on there right now. So my channel is The Super Home Worker. Make sure you add the word the at the beginning, and you'll see my video on thumbnails. So let's get back to here. Now, I want to go ahead and add this clip right here. Again, it's back to default, so you'll have to change the right seconds that you want. Apply. Drop it. Now, any more than one clip is going to come up with this pop-up question here. It's going to ask you, where do you want to pla place this guy? You want to put him in their slider position, beginning of the timeline, or end of timeline. Or if you want every clip to be exactly at the end of timeline each time, for an example, hit your default right here. Put a check mark in here. It'll never ask you again. So. We're going to say in the timeline this time. And plop. There you go. Now as you can see, your time right here has changed. It's scrunched down a little bit. But you'll notice my clip is still at the designated 10 seconds on my first section. So don't think that your time is cut down. They're just scrunching up the view part of your timeline for you. So you can hit and miss, or you can add or delete, remove, whatever you want to do. You can look at the whole thing at once here. And you can see over here is... 16 second now. Your video is now 16 seconds as opposed to 10 now because you add this clip for 6 seconds. So let's go over here and add, let's say, another one. And I'm going to leave my time, my slider right where it is. I'm going to leave it at 3 seconds default. Apply. Drop it down. Now, it's asking me where do I want to put it. Let's put it in the slider position. And it plops it right in between those two clips. Nice feature, huh? <laughs> now, Let's go ahead and take this slider and drop it over here at the beginning again. Scoot it clear over to the to the left. Now you notice this has changed now because it goes wherever the slider goes is what shows here. Hit your your play button and it plays through. So you can take a look at as you can see over here your seconds are counting down as each frame, each clip that it moves to. So that's a nice little feature. Now you can stop at any given time and come over here and hit your pause button. If you want to look at something, and hit it again, and it goes again. Now as you can see, it goes black. It's a 
is telling you it's the end of the fr uh, end of the frame into your video. Now, let's say you want some transitions with it. Go ahead and have transition. We're going to click on see these squares right here on each clip at the end of each clip. You click on one of those and you come up with this. It's a transition. Now Camtasia has a lot of options for transitions and it is a couple hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars actually for the full version. So um, if you want the free version of it, go to this link right here at the bottom of my video here and you can find out how you can get it from me. Now, back to here, your video transition. Now you have your choices of none, fade, cross fade, and fade through white. And you can play around with that and see what you like. Again, you have the, the option of seconds, how long you want. If you want each of them to be the same exact amount, restore to default, and you're good to go. Then you hit OK. Now as you notice, this little brown bar here, that tells you that you have set a transition in between those two clips and you have completed it. So that tells you that that one is done. So you can also, if you notice, I clicked on this by mistake on this clip earlier, and it, it lights up here, lights up navy blue. It tells you which clip you're actually on that you're editing, so there's no mistake. Now let's go to here, and you see the star? Each clip will have a little star in the left bottom corner. Click on it, it'll show you the, the clip that you're working on, and you have a few options here. Now you can have color effects on each clip. Let's say, for example, I want black and white instead of yellow and red. Go black and white. You have this tone. Or you can have a negative image where it looks like a, a, a old photo negative. Now this clip is not particularly a good example for that option, but trust me, it looks pretty cool on, on normal clips. Now, brightness option. Mm, let's go ahead and click on that one first. Brightness option. Your brightness, of course, self-explanatory. You go ahead and use the slider, or you can use the numbers over here, the contrast. When you're ready, OK. Now, you, this is a neat feature, crop and rotate. You can crop this image and rotate it. You can rotate left to right. You can um, keep proportions. You can change the proportions down at the bottom, as you can see. That's a nice little feature. You can watermark. You can, now let's go ahead and go to the text file now. This I love. You can add any kind of contact information you want on each clip that you want. Um, you can go ahead and use, um, you can click on font, you can change your font size. As you can see here, any kind of font, change your style, your size. You want to strike out, you want to underline the color of the font. And it gives you an example here once you pick and choose which one you want. Then you hit cancel or OK, whichever the case may be. Now you can put it in the middle of your clip, centered. So you can put it to the left, you can put it to the right, or you can even put it here. It adds it horizontal and vertical, wherever you want to put it. Position it in the center, top, or bottom. And this is where you add your caption, of course, and you type in... Uh, whatever you want. Online, number four, free.com. Make fast money online for free.com. That is my site if you want to check that out. But I just want to give you an example of that. And as you can see in the window here, as you're adding it, it'll show you here in the window. So don't worry. You can't, you can't mess up on it. And if you do, you can always edit it and delete it. So um, let's say, for example, I'm going to leave it like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm OK with it. Everything's fine. Hit OK. And now you see I've got the negative image now and I've got the, the editing at the bottom of it. Now if you want to see it, let's go over here and it shows up here. And it'll play it just like it. And if you notice there's a green bar that shows you that you have edited that clip to where you want it. And you can change that again if you want to later, but it just shows you that you have changed it. And it'll play through. Now you can stop that slider if you want to at any given time. Put it back to the beginning. You can pause this again. Okay. I've told you just about everything on it except for the, the couple features up here. Now if you have a video hardware that you want to, you have plugged into your computer, just click on this capture right here and you can add that video onto here if you want to. And I don't have anything hooked up currently, but when you go click on that, it's self-explanatory step by step. 
not a problem. Insert a blank clip in between clips if you want to. Here's your options, black, white, or custom color. And you can also have narrate. Now this is a nice feature, of course, this is very mandatory for video. Okay, this is your audio version. Now you want to narrate and talk and explain like I'm doing right now. You click on it and it'll show you wherever your slider is. Now it's very important that you put your slider where you want your narration to start because wherever your slider is is where your narration is going to start. So be careful with that. Okay, now that being said, here's your options. Record, pause, and stop. And over here to the right, very simple options. Default sound in. There you go. There are your options. Here, now this is very important. You might think, yes, it's obvious, but I am going to say this. Especially if you make a lot of videos over and over again for YouTube or any kind of site or for anything. Make sure that you name your each and every one of your narrations if you plan on making so many videos. Because you can add a narration to one video and then create another video clips, add that same narration to it. So just keep that in mind. Name it accordingly. Okay? Find it find a nice file to put them all in and then name them accordingly. You can add and remove whatever you want. Okay. And here is your of course your output file that you want to put the narration in. Now re please remember, this section here only records the narration part. So it doesn't save your video, okay? And as you narrate and you talk, your slider is going to be moving across these images. It's going to show you up here in your window as you talk, that's what the viewer is going to see. Just like if somebody clicked on it on YouTube. So that's a very nice feature. And your seconds and your minutes here, of course. Now let's go ahead and click done. Go back to here. Now once you have your narration, of course, it's going to show it down here. This is your, again, drag your sound clips here. Now you can drag, you can add, like add media. Go to your files. Find your narration clip, for example, you previously made. Click on it. Click on here and drop and drag. Drag, just click on it and drag it right down here. If you want to add it too, you can do that as well. And you can cut it too as far as you can as far as, you know, video pads concerned, you can do that. Now, there's also called a program that I have on my channel called Free Studio. I believe it is. Now, it is it's a very good program to use as far as converting one image to another. Now, I do want to tell you about Mixpad same company made this program made Mixpad. It's strictly just for your audio. That's on my channel too. You can download it for free. Again, my channel is The Super Home Worker. So check it out, download it, and you can use that as well. So I hope I've helped you out today, and I am going to show you one more thing, how to save your video. Now, go up here and you click on File. Now, Hit save. Don't hit save project file. Open. Don't hit those. Please don't. You just the the conversion. You have to convert it to the appropriate file for YouTube. Don't do that, please. Go down here and hit save movie. Okay. All right. Once you do that, give it a couple of seconds. It's trying to recognize the video you've created. Okay. Here we go. Now. It will show you options of how you want to transfer this particular project to. Do you want it to be on YouTube? Do you want it to be for a portable device? Computer data? Computer data is saved to your computer, obviously. And then you have the, the features down here of which extension you want the item to be. And you see some that you recognize, of course, for YouTube. Not a problem. You can, uh, you can also change your type. A video widescreen, YouTube widescreen, HD, so or custom as well. So you got that as well. So a lot of a lot of people ask me about that as well. Your resolution. Now I like to save it on my computer, but every once in a while I want to go straight to YouTube and just o upload it there. There you go. Now what you do is you um, browse after you go ahead and browse where you want it. YouTube username, your password your title to your video you want for YouTube, your description, just like if you're on YouTube, trying to upload it there. And your category that you want, your your tags, which here it's saying keywords, but the same thing as tags, hit OK, and it uploads it to YouTube for you. So just to give you some options out there, so I hope you've learned how to use VideoPad today, and have fun with it. Most importantly, just have fun with it. So I hope I've helped you out. This is the Super Home Worker, and I'll be looking forward to giving you another new video. Thanks for watching.